So it, it's a mixture of me explaining what the topic is. We have like different picture examples. We have the actors acting out different scenes. It's really a dope program. I was like, wow, this is really, really good because the lessons they tie in to one another and they build on one another. So since it's teaching social skills, we broke it in. So Mm -hmm. we broke it up into three sections. Mm -hmm. We broke it up into cognitive um, social skills because you have to know like what are the rules when I am trying to talk with someone like yeah what am I supposed to say what is not appropriate what is appropriate you know things that we take for granted and of course we mm-hmm. still mess up we say things that are not appropriate you know and then we have the social skills which is understanding like hey you know if you're trying to build on having a conversation why don't you lean towards open-ended questions and we teach you yes. how to ask more open-ended questions and like just trying to teach kids, teens, adults how to stay on topic because it's very easy to talk about what you want to talk about. But if someone yes. asks you to say, hey, how was your day? And you start talking about your favorite TV show, like that's great that you love your show. However, that's not mm-hmm. answering the topic. That's not talking mm-hmm. about what what is like the topic of the conversation. Talk Dude, about that. This is so important. And I love it. I love <laughs> and then we talk about the emotional skills because we are such emotional creatures like as humans we are very very emotional and we teach the students not only about identifying what an emotion looks like but how does that feel how does how when your engine is starting to run and you're getting anxious how does that feel so that you can identify it and then we teach strategies on how to self-regulate you know, being that this is becoming so common, unfortunately, that it's being so common, what are we going to do about it? Like, it's very easy to say, oh, this is causing it, that's causing it. I'm sure there's a lot of things that's causing it. I'm not going to get into that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're here now. Yeah. And let's support the families. Let's support the children. Let's figure out how we can get this information to help families thrive and be empowered you know, typically to help parents and caregivers from burnout. Yes. You That's know, the whole goal of this season for this show. Yeah. It's like people need support. And a lot of times it's like you're, you want to give because this is your child, you know, mm-hmm. or if it's your niece, your nephew, whatever the relation may be, you want to give and give and give and give and give. However, is your cup even like, does it have any substance left to give? Mm-hmm. You know, it's very easy to get lost in just giving and forgetting to pour back into yourself on this to help families and caregivers be empowered and to regain health. You know, yes, if you health is wealth, you know, if you don't have health, what you working with? Yeah, you know? we worry so much about our kids health, right? Mental health and everything. But then how can you be at your optimal when you're not pouring back into yourself? It's impossible. Yeah, it really and this is, is what I've been teaching the parents in the through the show is that you need to take a minute, a minute, two minutes, five minutes for yourself. Like it's not selfish. There is no it's actually better for your child. When you're it there's scientific studies. I, I'm not gonna quote like some random numbers, but I don't have them with me. But it's scientifically proven that when your parent is happy, healthy, and in a good mental health space, you as a child have a better childhood. Mm -hmm. So it is in your best interest for you to pour back into yourself and help yourself avoid caregiver burnout. Um, But it's literally about that, about parent caregivers and how we as a society are failing them because we're not providing enough supports for them. And I love the fact that you're doing that for these parents because it's and free girl, free. Bye. It just become well, yeah, a lot of relationships they end up becoming fractured, but it's due to parents being burnt out. Like when you really look at it, like girl, that's that the reason. Sense. Like when you're tapped out, you can't give to the other person because you're on E. Whatever reserves you have, you're trying to pour that into the child. You know? So it's like everything's literally everything falls apart based off of where you are mentally, emotionally, physically. If you're run down, you know, everything else is going to fall to the wayside. Yo, you just like highlighted something. My brain just exploded right now, seriously. Because there are so many moms that are single moms that are moms of children with special needs. 
it's actually for me i was talking about this with the directors of the of the documentary Mm -hmm. it for me it's been rare to find a two-parent household there has to be some kind of research study like leading up to that but like what you're saying is making complete sense like they're stressed they don't know how to mitigate that and then the relationships end up falling to the wayside because they haven't taken time to really like feed into themselves and like help themselves get back to center yeah it's so important it's so so important but i feel as though i don't know if there's a stigma you know to admit that you're burnt out because again i'm not a mother so i can't speak on behalf of you know that experience but i just really wonder if parents mothers don't want to even admit that they're burnt out like would would they associate that with being a bad mom i don't know it's not that is that i feel i feel honestly people don't know the signs of burnout and then the thing is that especially our generation and maybe the generation before us we saw our parents struggle all the time um i had people that i knew in my mom's social circle that used to beat the crap out of their kids and it was that they were burnt out and they couldn't deal with the children's behavior the the behavior wasn't that severe but it was normalized behavior so it's like you know the parent is all the way stressed out they're dealing with uh, economic issues societal pressures uh, a lot of them especially me because I'm you know first generation here they're dealing with immigration issues and other things that are going on in society the parents are not taking care of themselves and in turn are lashing out against their children and mm-hmm. it's it ended up being that they were resentful of their children mm-hmm. so those kids are now the kids our generation that are working on all those passed down traumas you know and you know we didn't see people going to therapy when we were kids. Mm-hmm. We didn't see people doing self-care for themselves for the most part, you know. Yeah. Especially coming from, you know, communities of color, like that wasn't a thing. So, I feel like maybe they just don't know how to recognize the signs of burnout.